logged on, so I will get started. Thank you again for joining us for today's webinar, uh, where we will talk about um, how you can update your online presence as an artist, uh, which is something that I think is incredibly important uh, during this COVID-19 crisis right now. So thank you again for joining us. Um, as I mentioned, this will be about updating your digital presence as an artist. And again, thank you to our sponsor today, American Family Insurance Institute for Corporate and Social Impact. Uh, and again, if you need to call in for audio, here's the number you can call and the webinar ID as well. And just some housekeeping things uh, for questions during today's webinar, uh, you can type into the Q&A box, uh, type in your questions and send to the host. Uh, and we will try to read it and answer it uh, during the webinar. Uh, if not, we will uh, send you some written answers later. Um, any unanswered questions will be sent to the speaker to answer after the webinar. Please do not send your questions anonymously so that we can ensure that we can get back to you. Uh, and any other questions, send emails to maureen at generator.com during the webinar. If you have technology issues, uh, which I'm sure we all do at some point, uh, due to the number of people on today's webinar, we will unfortunately uh, be unable to solve your technical issues. We will record the webinar and share it with all the registered emergency response program participants. Uh, it will also be on uh, the fellowship.art website as well. Uh, so your speakers for today, uh, me, Maureen Regali, I'm the director of fellowship.art. Uh, and our other host, oop, technical issues already. Our other host uh, is uh, Kate Mothis from Young Space. Unfortunately, she is unable to be with us today uh, because she's not feeling well. Uh, so I will be covering some topics that she was originally going to talk about. Uh, but she is the director of Young Space, uh, and she's also an independent curator. Um, Oh, here's some information about Young Space, um, which is an independent uh, curatorial pr program uh, organized by Kate Mothis, uh, and it has a lot of online exhibitions. Uh, and it's primarily for early career and emerging artists. Um, the exhibitions are coordinated nationally and internationally in collaboration with artists and spaces. Uh, and really the kind of background behind Young Space is that they want uh, artists input and participation and they want to provide resources that will help artists connect. The first uh, topic on uh, today's webinar will be Instagram. Um, this is incredibly important for pretty much every artist. Uh, it is still the top dog when it comes to free social media platforms uh, with wide search and global usage. Uh, and it complements the use of some other platforms that you might be using, uh, like websites, e-commerce websites like Saatchi Art and Art Fair. Um, and it's really one of the best methods to show your work in progress and to connect with others so that they can uh, start following your art career. Um, one of the other great things is the ability to watch or share your own live streams. Uh, that's perfect for keeping up with other programs and interviews and talks and providing additional content, uh, especially in times when you can't physically be around other people, like right now. Uh, side note though, uh, depending on your own interests uh, in, and use of Instagram, uh, it might be nice to create a separate account just for your art uh, so that uh, art collectors aren't necessarily uh, looking at all of your cat photos, uh, for example, unless your art involves cat photos. Uh, some pros about uh, using Instagram, uh, it's primarily visual, which is great for visual artists, uh, and uh, the ability to network directly with other people and other accounts on Instagram. Uh, so there's not really that social barrier of like, oh, I need to be introduced to this person before showing them my art. Uh, and it's used by pretty much everyone in the art world, from artists to curators, galleries, museums. Uh, pretty much everyone has an Instagram account. Uh, and it's also really uh, started to be used for research and finding uh, new artwork. Um, and it's free, so you can't beat that. Uh, 
comms. Uh, it's been in use for a long time. Uh, and because it's free, it can feel saturated. Uh, there's no filter, so it's not just art. You can look at images and videos of pretty much everything and everyone. Uh, so it can be kind of hard. Uh, your, your work can get a little lost on Instagram sometime. Um, it can also be a huge time suck or distraction, uh, which can be detri detrimental to your own practice. Um, and there's a lot of uh, so-called Instagram ready artwork out there. Uh, but just because it's nice to look at the image of the artwork doesn't necessarily mean that it's great art. Uh, so uh, your artwork can kind of start to feel a little lost uh, on Instagram. Uh, we do also have a couple guides uh, for optimizing the platform's um, re reach and best practices, um, you know, how to make sure that your uh, artwork images are sh showing up on searches, etc. Um, so you can definitely check these out later. Um, and uh, other side note, uh, try not to overuse hashtags and tagging other users uh, that can start to uh, make other users feel like they're being bombarded by your artwork, which is usually detrimental. Uh, so I would highly recommend checking out uh, the, uh, these uh, different resources here. Uh, websites. Uh, is it still important to have a website even if you're using Instagram? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Uh, a website is essentially your digital portfolio. Uh, it's a professional representation of your past work and what uh, you will include as a link uh, for applications and on your CV, etc. cetera. Um, so really, really it fills a very different role than uh, your Instagram account should. Um, curators, galleries, et cetera, collectors still look at your website for information. Uh, I like to think of Instagram as sort of like the first uh, thing that will get people interested in your work, uh, but that should lead them to your website. Um, so, for example, the amount of submissions that uh, must be reviewed for any open call, for example, uh, means that it's, uh, it will really kind of drive the curators or jury members to look at your website uh, to find good images of your artwork, concise information about you, um, and it's much more likely that they will pay serious attention to your artwork if you have a good website. I'm listening. Uh, Websites complement Instagram or other social media uh, by being an archive and a destination for information about you, such as your CV, your biography, your artist statement, uh, current works or highlights from a current body of work, past exhibition documentation, additional projects, uh, newsletter sign up to build a mailing list if you want to send out email updates. And a couple of recommended platforms for building your own website if you're starting from scratch. Um, these all have easy to use templates and affordable plans. Uh, there's Cargo Collective, Squarespace, Wix, and Weebly. Uh, they're all pretty good for your basic artist website. Um, so I recommend that you check those out as well. Um, Another really important part of setting up your website is making sure that you set up um, the ability to have email mailings, uh, lists and newsletters, etc. Um, it's up to you, but uh, I think it's really important to send out occasional updates about what's going on in your studio and upcoming events, etc. Um, and it's a great way to connect with spe specific audience of people uh, who like your work, um, you know, keeping up with collectors, et cetera. Uh, on your website, you can encourage people to sign up for updates uh, by giving you their uh, email address. Um, and especially if you have work in a show or upcoming exhibition, uh, I would highly recommend sending out an, an email to your email list. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great way to keep people updated. Uh, some suggested services for doing that include MailChimp, uh, tiny letter, constant contact, dripped, uh, or sorry, drip and uh, send in blue. Uh, they all kind of function the same way. Uh, some have some are free up to a certain amount. Others um, will charge you. Uh, but I think it is a really important way of setting up an email list for your studio. 
Uh, open calls. Uh, there are tons of applications open at any given time for exhibition opportunities uh, and increasingly online exhibitions, uh, as well as regular exhibitions, reg um, residencies, etc. Uh, and so it's important if you're responding to these open calls to make sure that your website is up to date. Um, if you share a link to your Instagram account uh, or other social media, uh, make sure it's obvious what work what your work is like. Um, otherwise, you should probably just leave that out. Uh, you know, if you uh, have both, you know, personal photos and your artwork on your Instagram account, it might be better to leave it out. Um, and pick opportunities that you think work, uh, your work fits well with um, and that you would really like to be a part of. You know, uh, don't just uh, blanket apply for everything. Uh, make sure that it seems like your artwork would be a good fit. Um, research who the curators, jurors, or organizers are and see what their interests are uh, and if they align with what uh, you are and also what you're interested in or trying to accomplish. Um, also important, try not to wait until the last minute to apply um, because otherwise uh, it's very likely that uh, servers will get overloaded uh, and organizers might not be able to respond to your questions in a timely manner. Um, and yeah, if you apply early, uh, very often your work will be some of the first works that the uh, curators or jurors will look at. Uh, and so that can be a really important thing. Uh, if you're one of hundreds of applicants, uh, that's a great way to stand out as well. Um, online exhibitions or virtual uh, viewing rooms showcases are becoming increasingly popular right now. Uh, once they were a little bit of a novelty, uh, but during the pandemic, this is really the only way that people will get to see your work consistently uh, right now. Um, and so pretty much every gallery that I know of right now is trying to do some sort of virtual exhibition. Um, Obviously, virtual exhibitions will never really replace the experience of viewing your work in person, uh, but these are still legitimate opportunities. Um, and I think it's really important to know that, you know, a lot of galleries are already used to selling works of art uh, to collectors who never actually see the work in person. Uh, so I kind of think of these virtual exhibitions as just kind of the next step in that, um, you know, very often sales are made uh, by just, you know, sending PDFs of available works to collectors uh, and kind of the virtual exhibition is just, I think, kind of the classier way of doing that as well. Um, so, um, as with any opportunity, when you're applying for online exhibitions, see who the organizers or curators are, and if it's something that you would really want to be connected to. Um, and uh, it's also important to note that many virtual platforms still charge uh, kind of a nominal fee for reviewing applications. Uh, these fees go towards administrative costs, as well as web fees, advertising, paying staff, etc., cetera, uh, depending on the organization or initiative. Um, so there are some galleries that are doing this for free for their artists. Uh, others are um, using the, uh, will charge a nominal fee um, for participating. Um, yeah, online exhibitions are often connected to social media in order to maximize the amount of eyes on the work. Uh, that's also really important, again, when we're talking about uh, maintaining your Instagram account uh, as part of uh, a way to show your artwork. Um, Online exhibitions or viewing rooms can range, uh, and currently many galleries and artists are figuring out how to put the artwork online in a format that's easy to navigate. Uh, they range from a simple web page or site with images uh, to things that could be much more interactive. Um, some galleries that are still able to install uh, will actually install the work in their gallery and then use like a 3D app to scan the gallery. Um, and actually, let me see if I can exit out of this uh, and show you at least one example of that. Um, uh, so for example, this is uh, a virtual gallery that you can go on a virtual tour of. Um, So you can see what it would look like in the actual space, uh, but it still doesn't actually replace going to see the work in person. 
Uh, one plus side to all this virtual art gallery exhibition stuff is that you don't actually have to ship your work uh, for any of these, uh, which is great for saving time and money. Uh, the downside is that you need to make sure that you have really great high res images of your artwork um, so that it will look good on a website. Um, oh, uh, there are also just a couple other uh, interesting galleries uh, and uh, online exhibitions that I think are worth taking a look at. Uh, David's Werner Gallery in New York uh, has a platform uh, for other galleries uh, to show works by a single artist. Uh, they also have set up private viewing rooms on their website. Uh, so they send out an email to collectors uh, with a password to log into these private viewing rooms um, where they can uh, look at artwork uh, that's installed within the gallery, uh, but uh, it's a virtual viewing room essentially. Uh, I would also recommend taking a look at uh, Young Space uh, for their online gallery. Uh, the Grilled Cheese Grant uh, has, I think, a really kind of uh, great but simple uh, way of uh, showing some of their finalists' uh, works of art. Uh, and Van Doren Waxter also has a really kind of uh, basic but good and simple way for um, showing their artists' work online. Uh, so actually, let me exit out of here and show you some of these different platforms. Um, this is the David Zwerner Platform New York. Um, so they have invited all of these different New York art galleries uh, to show works by their artists on here. Um, so it's kind of also giving that sense of community among galleries um, that is really kind of hard to recreate digitally. Um, so I would highly recommend taking a look at this website. Um, and then here we have uh, one of the David Zwerner private viewing rooms. Uh, so it's available on their website. Uh, and then uh, you have to have a special login to actually view the works as they're on display within the gallery. Uh, this is the grilled cheese grant that I mentioned. Um, it's a super simple website, uh, but uh, all of the artists have their artist statement as well as uh, great images of their artwork, uh, which is really kind of, that's the most important part to have. Uh, and let's see here. Uh, oh, so the Van Doren Waxter uh, website, uh, this is their current exhibition. They just have really great installation views of their artwork here uh, within the gallery. Uh, and then you can also look at uh, the individual works of art. Um, and I think it's important to note here as well uh, that we have all the artwork information here. So the artist, the title, the medium, the date, the dimensions, uh, so that you have all that information at your fingertips is I think very important. And so in summary, having a website is essential. Uh, think of it as kind of your uh, digital business card with all of your information in one place. Instagram is not essential, but it's incredibly helpful uh, for networking, for research, to share what you're currently working on. Um, an e-newsletter marketing is a great way to stay in touch with people, uh, particularly people who have already purchased a work uh, or are have already expressed interest in your artwork. Um, keep applying to open calls. Everything that's relevant to your work um, and organized by people that you think uh, that you really respect uh, and want to have eyes on your work. Uh, and virtual exhibitions are pretty much everywhere right now. So take advantage of them while you can. Uh, one of the other things we wanted to talk about is selling your art online. Uh, art e-commerce is uh, really important in times like these as well. Um, so some crucial parts of selling your art online, uh, having your personal website is 
really important. It adds a sense of legitimacy to your art practice. Uh, so when people start researching you, uh, that's where they'll uh, first head to learn everything about you as an artist. Uh, I will also, uh, after this, talk a little bit about some art e-commerce platforms uh, and what the differences are, et cetera. Um, also, as I mentioned, Instagram, it's a great way to get people familiar with your artwork. And of course, these online exhibitions are going to be another great way of selling your work online. Uh, so uh, here's just kind of a list of some of the main uh, art e-commerce platforms right now. Uh, and I'll kind of go through um, some of the pros and cons of each of them. Uh, probably the main one right now is Artsy. Um, it is primarily, though, for larger galleries or for artist estates. Uh, they don't necessarily serve the emerging art market as much. Um, it's a subscription-based service. So galleries or artists pay a monthly subscription fee. Um, and then what happens is all of the um, sales inquiries uh, go directly to the gallery. So the platform doesn't take a percentage of any of the sales that happen on Artsy. They just kind of act as a connector between uh, clients and artists and galleries. Uh, one of the pros is that it's a curated platform. Uh, so that means that uh, not just any old gallery or any old artist can get on their uh, platform. Uh, instead, they have to essentially go through a jury process. Uh, uh, as someone who has worked in the art e-commerce platforms before, uh, it's not a terribly rigorous uh, um, jury process, but you know it's still very helpful. Uh, they will look at your CV, they will look at um, you know uh, past clients, etc. Um, price point is another thing that they're really going to be looking at for your artwork as well. Um, it, most of uh, the work on Artsy will be at least over a $1,000. Um, so, but I would definitely recommend taking a look at it. Um, another main one is artspace.com. Uh, so again, it's primarily geared towards larger galleries or artist estates. Um, although actually, so it also has um, kind of some mid-range mid and emerging galleries. Um, they also have a section called Straight from the Studio, where artists can apply uh, for their work to go directly on the website without gallery representation. Uh, again, it's a juried, um, juried platform, so um, a team of curators from Artspace will look at your work, uh, and uh, they'll again look at your CV, uh, who your collectors are, uh, what exhibitions you've been in, uh, before deciding whether or not to have your work on the website. Um, Artspace does not uh, charge a subscription fee, but they will take a commission from all of your sales. Um, and uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what the commission is, uh, but uh, you can expect uh, maybe 50% uh, commission for something like Artspace. Um, another one is Artfinder. Uh, Artists can list their work directly on this site, so there's no gallery middleman for this. Uh, but again, Artfinder takes a commission of any sales. Um, and another interesting feature with Artfinder is that they actually help you price your work. Um, the other platforms I've mentioned, uh, you kind of you just give them uh, the price of your work and they they put that online. Um, but Artfinder will actually have a representative work with you to find out how best to price your work for that website. Um, oh, and I should also note uh, for Artfinder and many of these other sites, uh, you are going to be responsible for shipping the work to the client. Uh, so that means you will have to add in uh, to the price of your artwork, the shipping cost as well, um, just to make sure that you don't all of a sudden have to spend more on shipping your artwork to the client than you are actually making on the work of art. Uh, so that's just another thing to consider. Uh, Saatchi Art is another site uh, for selling art online. Um, again, artists list their work directly on the site. There's no gallery middleman. Um, it's again, commission-based. Uh, it's not curated per se, but there are curator's picks. 
so that means uh, the site has some curators. Uh, they'll look through all of the art that's on the site and pick their top few, and those are put on the main page of the Saatchi website uh, so that your work is much more likely to be seen by collectors. Uh, so that's certainly an important part of Saatchi art. Uh, one of the pluses and minuses for Saatchi art is the name recognition. Um, so the Saatchi family uh, has kind of a mixed, uh, some people love them, some people hate them in the art world. Um, they are known for um, essentially hoarding art by artists um, and really kind of using them to make a profit. So, um, you know, the Saatchi family is actually no longer directly involved in the running of the site. Uh, so again, kind of take it or leave it. Um, you know, just do your research on the Saatchi family uh, before becoming too connected um, would be my advice. Um, and then Art Fair is uh, another platform. It's, I think, fairly, it's fairly new compared to some of these others. Um, and it's a platform, instead of selling your art directly on this website, uh, what they do is set up studio visits. Uh, so they connect artists with, um, with collectors who are interested in learning about them as artists, uh, not necessarily interested in buying artwork right away, but uh, it's, it's a really great way to meet uh, potential collectors. Um, again, it's a curated platform, uh, so you have to um, have your work uh, reviewed by a jury before uh, it will go on the website. Uh, it's a subscription-based model, so uh, I think it's something like $20 a month or something. Um, so they don't take a commission out of any sales that you make uh, through their platform, um, but you know it, it will cost a little bit on a monthly basis. Um, and one of the things that's really interesting uh, is, I mean, initially when this was created, uh, this was to do in-person studio visits. Uh, they have shifted almost immediately to doing virtual studio visits at this time. Uh, so it's a great way of getting new collectors into your studio, even if it is virtually right now. Um, uh, and then here are just a couple additional resources um, on how to sell your work online. Uh, just some articles that I think might be interesting and helpful. Uh, and yeah, uh, just some different ways, different articles. Uh, for example, the New York Times talks about uh, virtual viewing rooms and how that will influence the art world moving forward, et cetera. And thank you for joining me today. Uh, I hope this was informative. Uh, if you do have any additional questions, please sign up for our one-on-one -on -one office hours. Uh, you can sign up on the fellowship.art website. Uh, you can also shoot me an email uh, and I'll be happy to chat with you a little bit more about this. Uh, I will also post uh, this webinar on the, web the fellowship.art website as well. Um, and thank you again. Uh, tomorrow we will be having someone uh, do a webinar on your mental health and wellness right now, which is another, I think, really important thing to think about during these times. Uh, so thank you again for joining. Does anyone have any questions? All right. Oh, oh it looks like there's one question. Hang on. which for some reason I can't access. So the one question that came in is just a thank you to oh. Oh. Yeah, thank that you looks like Claire Jorgensen raised her hand. Claire, if you would be interested in submitting a question, you can do it through uh, the question and answer feature. All right, oh, looks like there are more questions coming in that I can't look at for some reason. All right, Claire asked, uh, will these slides be available after? And yes, we can definitely send those out afterwards. Yes, we will have those available to you. And then uh, another thank you from uh, Lennis Matthews, so. Well, thank you guys. This was really wonderful. Thanks for joining me today. 
So we will be posting this information on um, the emergency response program resources page and also under the fellowship.art. So uh, stay tuned for that. Hopefully uh, we'll have everything up by the end of the week. All right, thank you guys.